Okay, we're going to create a wine label and we'll just customize it so that it looks like our personal wine label. And I'm simply following this Adobe tutorial that I have open on the right side and that you have access to through Canvas that's linked above. Um, what I've done is I've downloaded the files, I've opened them up in Illustrator and I can see their original files here. Uh, so what we'll do is just follow step by step this tutorial and I'll show you maybe how I would approach it. So the first step is to place a drawing or photograph as a background. So uh, I've already downloaded a file using Flickr. Remember you can use Flickr and um, limit the copyright so that um, you can find files that have you know, no copyright restrictions on them. And that's exactly what I've done. So what I'll do is I'll just place that file here. Command Shift P on a Mac. Uh, it should be Control Shift P on a PC. And I have this, this map. So what I'll do is it's a lot larger than the size of our artboards, so I'll keep it selected and I'm just going to transform. And remember that in your transform options under properties, you have X and Y, which is the location of the reference point. Right now that's centered. But what we want to do is let's move our reference point to the upper left corner because that's what we can actually see here. So it will transform from or to that corner and then we will just adjust the width and height again making sure that those are linked together so that they scale and I'll just reduce this to 10 inches press return and now we have essentially an 8 by 10 which is significantly smaller but not small enough so let's bring it down to 6 inches now Ah, that looks much better. Okay, so now that we have this, we're going to use this as our background. Okay, and I'll take a look at my layers here. This is in the foreground, but within my layer, um, I can see that we have two rectangles. Okay, so we will place it in front of each of those rectangles. So let's just, you can either move it back one at a time using the uh, command left and right bracket or you can just place it um, where you want it to be in the um, file I'm sorry in the layer should I I should say so I'll just play the place this linked file there in that layer and um, I'll just scale it up Well, actually, maybe it doesn't need, I'll scale it down a little bit. And we're just going to work on this left artboard. Okay, so this is, the right side is just the end product. The left side is the artboard that you want to be working on. And if you want to keep that dark blue um, rectangle uh, along with this image or whatever image you might place. Obviously you don't have to place an image like the one I'm placing. Um, but if you did want to um, keep some of that navy blue, then what you might want to do is keep this image selected, take a look at your properties panel, and uh, under appearance there's an option for opacity that will have some of the same options that you became familiar with when you were working in Photoshop. So uh, right now it is at normal, 100% opacity, but if you click on normal, you'll get that same drop-down menu for blending modes. We should all feel somewhat comfortable with blending modes right now. So you could maybe explore these a little bit more. Overlay is always an easy choice because my image is lighter in the background behind it. That navy blue rectangle is darker. Overlay is going to work out just fine. Um, 
uh, but you can always kind of explore something like luminosity that will give you a black and white image for the image you have selected over the color that's behind it. That's how it's blending, just to give you an idea. Uh, luminosity looks kind of cool. That's pretty neat. And then you could try some of the other ones. Hard light doesn't seem to do much. Soft light is interesting. Um, so it just depends on kind of the mood that you're trying to capture here. I think what I'll do is leave it um, I actually like the soft light. So maybe what I'll do is I'll leave the soft light and um, and then going back to my layers window, I may just adjust that color very slightly to be a little bit lighter. Okay, so you can just double click when you have um, an object selected here in your layers by clicking next to the meatball, you can just double click the fill swatch and then make some changes, right? Um, going straight up is just going to um, lighten, okay? Left will desaturate, right will saturate. And diagonal will sort of, uh, diagonal up to the left will lighten and desaturate, diagonally up to the right will uh, lighten while adding saturation, just to give you an idea of how to think about uh, this matrix when you're looking at the color options. Okay, so we have a background that includes uh, a photograph, and that came from, um, again, from Flickr with no copyright restrictions on it. Um, and then if we wanted to, we could add guides to this. Now, I, I haven't added the guides yet, but to add guides, you can uh, hold your mouse down over a ruler and drag down. If when you do that, you don't see the guides, just go to window, I'm sorry, go to view, not window, go to view, and then we want to show guides. Okay, so na navigate down to guides. It's about, you know, four fifths of the way down uh, this very long view menu. Look for guides, show guides, and of course, you can see here in the menu, there should be a shortcut key. So for a Mac, that is command semicolon. Okay. All right, so that gives us our guides. And uh, lo and behold, Adobe actually already gave you guides. But now you know, to create a guide, just drag from a ruler out to where you want the guide and release. So if I wanted more guides, I could add them by holding my mouse down um, over a ruler and dragging away from the ruler. Okay. All right. And our guides right now, for me, in my system, they are not locked. However, if for some reason you're having trouble moving your guides, they may automatically be locked. So know that you can lock your guides here in that same view menu. You can also release the guides. And if you just want to start over, you can clear guides. All right. So we have some guides here. And we're going to... Um, add the shapes, all right? They have given us the shapes that we wanna work with, um, although you could, again, make changes, okay? And uh, it's recommending that you, you know, explore, um, explore overlap, explore, um, color, Okay, so let's just say we decided to put our shapes a little differently than they did. Okay, so to rotate something like this triangle, I'll zoom in here. R gives us our rotate tool. And I can just hold shift while rotating. 
and that will lock it into 45 degree angles. Okay. So of course we could do that. And don't feel like you have to use the exact same shapes they've given you. I could uh, duplicate this triangle and uh, rotate it again. Oops, my, uh, we always want to make sure our transform reference point is where we want it to be. So I'm going to make it down there. Um, and then rotate it. And you can even play with opacity. So if that's something you're interested in, again, don't feel like you have to <coughs> design it exactly like Adobe did. So I used opacity. Now the one thing we lost when I changed that opacity is I lost that circle because it's lighter. So color burn is a darkening mode. So if your color is lighter than its back, or if the object is lighter than its background, color burn won't work. So let's do um, something like a soft light. Okay. And I like what's starting to happen here. So what I'm going to do is just select these two objects, rotate them so they are symmetric, and center them. I think that's good. And I'll apply some similar designs over here on the right side. So I did a color burn. You can do any, any changes you want. So again, don't feel like you have to do it exactly like me. I think this is not quite... So I'm going to select all three of these objects. It's two triangles and a semicircle. I'm going to group it together. So uh, to group, go to your object menu. It's somewhat at the top. It's the fourth option, group. In a Mac, it's Command G. Okay. And then I'll just duplicate this and add it over here. Okay, and we can always, if we like something, oops, we can duplicate it. So you can group these together, again using that object menu, and duplicate. And then we'll duplicate again. And uh, in our transform menu under properties, we could even, you know, flip these. Okay. So that looks pretty good. Okay, so it does look different than the design that they made, but you know, that, that's to be expected. Okay. So here they talk about using the shape builder. If we did want to use the shape builder, certainly we could. Uh, for instance, if I wanted to punch out something, I would use the shape builder in is the shortcut key and then control. Oops. I'm sorry, option would allow me to punch out any shapes we don't want seen. So again, using that shape builder, I'm using option oops, on mine, my screen. And uh, what I could do is option click, option click, and it'll eliminate those extra shapes. Uh, same thing here, since I grouped these together. 
uh, shape builder. I'm sorry, I said it was M, it's shift M. Option click and then option click to eliminate some of these. Okay. Remember with the shape builder, for it to work, it does have to have objects selected prior to utilizing the shape builder. So for instance, if I take my shape builder and I hover over the circle and try to use it, right, it's not going to work. So I have to use V, my selection tool, and select both objects, so the circle and the triangle, and then I can use my shift M to eliminate one or the other, right, if that makes any sense. Right, so select with your selection tool V, and then use shift M to access that shape builder, and you can merge shapes or cut shapes away, totally up to you. All right, so now let's personalize the font, okay? So uh, I'm gonna select the text and go in here and choose a font that I like or um, not American typewriter, but you can kind of see. Um, there's a lot of choices in my system. So what I will choose is perhaps something I want a nature face, but I do want something a little more traditional. So choose whatever typeface you like. Um, maybe Lacho with a uh, very heavy. application and it doesn't look so good right now but what I'll do is I'll increase the size and then I may have to increase the size of my text box as well so just using my selection tool I'm just making this taller so that it fits and then we also need to change the color of the type so let's select that orange that we were working with before and again we have this for reference okay um, if you want to add more fonts you can always when you're in your font area you can always um, click on more fonts and find more and then you can search for Adobe fonts which by clicking on it, I just initialized it. So, um, so again, you can kind of take a look here and decide if there is a particular font that you would like to use. That's again very much up to you. Okay. All right. Now, I know that they use lines, so if you are interested in adding some lines to your um, to your label, that's um, very easy to do. There are, um, there's the pen tool, but you can also use your line segment tool, which is in the same area as your rectangle tool in your toolbar. Okay, so let's say I wanted some lines in here. Maybe I would do something like that, or even um, if I zoom in here, I could draw a line and um, apply a stroke. 
and give that stroke a color like orange or black. Um, and then what we could do is using our selection tool, simply duplicate this. Okay, so I have two black. I'm actually going to lighten this background so you guys can see this better. Okay, so I have two black lines here. If I wanted those to uh, be blended, I can then use our blending mode. So under object menu, blend, blend options, select specified steps. Let's do eight steps is good. And then object blend make. Again, we have a shortcut key here. Okay. Oops, somehow I had something selected there. Somehow. Oh, there we go. For some reason I, I accidentally had um, something else selected that we didn't want. Okay, so let's say we really like the way that looks. We could duplicate it down here. give it some caps so that they're the same height. It's a little trick. And then we will just decrease this so that it lines up right with the edge of these letters. Use my direct selection tool. You don't have to do this. I'm just doing it to show you. How you can control this so that it lines up right with these little points. Okay, and then here, these are a little wide, so let's just bring those in and give them an orange stroke. Give this an orange stroke. Okay. And then you could keep editing here. Now, depending on what you want things to look like, it may be that you really want to change this to be something else. Okay. I'll just do a color burn here so you can kind of see what happens. Um, so I'm going to do a color burn so it has a similar style as the rest of the design. But what I need to do really is to lighten this rectangle. So I'm going to keep kind of playing with the lightness of that rectangle. Okay. And, and now we have something that we're proud of. Again, you can keep, keep playing around with the typeface. Maybe you want it to be more fun or different. Okay. Um, but you can, of course, keep exploring that with different styles and different typefaces. And then what I'll do is I will add one more rectangle. And uh, I'll make it the same size as the 
the artboard or the blue rectangle that was in the very back. And just to show you, I'll hide these too. I'm going to make a clipping mask. So I put the rectangle in front of everything else. Then I select everything on this artboard and I'll just make a clipping mask. So for me, that's command seven on a keyboard. But just to give you an idea of what this looks like, I can adjust that. So now I have a customized wine label and I use the same uh, content, the same type of tools, but it ended up looking quite different, right? Because uh, my adjustments were different. Now I don't even need to leave everything where they placed it. I could rearrange the location. Maybe I don't even, you know, maybe I want to go in and even change, um, you know, the height of this rectangle, right? So you can make all these adjustments yourself. But I think this is a good way um, for you to practice uh, using some of these tools and just to get more familiar with some of the options. For instance, um, activating new fonts or exploring opacity and repetition. Um, feel free to go crazy with these shapes. And then once you're done, you can just save this. So I'm going to go to File, um, Export, and I'll just do, um, well, I can actually do a Save As. I'll do a File Save As. I'll save it on my computer. And then the format I want to choose is PDF. Um, and when I save it, I can also select a range. And I'll just select range one. And I'll save it. Preserve Illustrator, page thumbnails are great. Save PDF. And what that will do is that will give me a one page PDF right here. You can see it preview. And that's what you'll submit for this assignment. Okay, so I hope that helps. And again, feel free to customize as much or as little as you want.